Okay, so I have the great pleasure of introducing our next speaker in the Americas Showcase. So I'm delighted to introduce Maria Jesus in Ostroza, who's showcasing Chile. She's a Chilean teacher of English, storyteller, and researcher, who's been working in primary English teaching for more than 10 years. She's a member of the network of Chilean researchers in ELT, R-I-C-E-L-T, and currently works as a teacher educator at Universidad de Concepcion, Chile. Take it away, Maria. Okay, thank you very much, David. I'm delighted to be here. Um, well, as time is limited and I really want to hear uh, your questions or read your questions in this case, um, we're going to start. Um, so today's presentation is a bit of a story on how I have discovered um, the need of um, of learning experiences in in primary Chilean classroom, particularly through storytelling. So we are going to start a little bit about understanding. Um, storytelling, then I will describe it in a context, and then I will tell a story um, that actually opened my eyes in my experience in, a, um, in my Chilean primary classrooms, and then I will address some of the practical examples that could come out from this story. Um, so when, when I started teaching um, young learners, um, I was reading and most of the reading showed or presented that um, learning English from an early start actually encourages motivation, it expands intercultural experiences and also enhances the use of language in action. This was not that new for me and I assume at this point it's not new for you as um, young learners teachers. And I also identified that there were a group or a set of activities which emerged recurrently in the literature for young learners. And these were storytelling, games, songs, role play, and listen and do. Uh, at that point in, in my career as a teacher, I was um, really connected to be a storyteller. So I start discovering storytelling and um, we have identify storytelling as um, an interesting environment as it provides content comprehension and meaning, meaning construction, uh, which is supported by image and body language, right? And this is not only for the language classroom, but storytelling in general. Um, it also helps to develop listening skills and literacy competences. Um, here, Luciana, Recently, we were talking about uh, how important it is to understand the story and the events from the story uh, just from the cover of the book. So we can here in incorporate elements of prediction, right, and cohesive devices that could support literacy development later. And also, um, storytelling motivates children, enhances their imagination, this idea of prediction again, and these um, elements on, on what do they expect and how they imagine uh, these situations or these characters are related to storytelling in the classroom. Now, what comes here and what connects the language classroom is how storytelling appeals their previous knowledge of stories in general, but also of the, the ritual of telling stories. Right? We can connect children's um, previous experiences with the stories, with these new stories that we are telling. Now, we can see as well that stories are not new for our lives in general, right? Because we tell stories all the time. When we tell, um, and that's the way we, we discover human um, and we transmit human knowledge, right? So 
Um, this is a very interesting idea of how stories actually are cru crucial for developing personal and social identities in building community. And this, this point um, made a lot of sense when you think of, um, of, of a social identity. We as Chilean, for example, uh, tell different stories about your experiences in earthquakes. So we create this social identity and we um, bond as a community based on these shared experiences. So these narratives are repetitive in, in the different generations. Um, these stories also boost motivation in the classroom, provide the basis for social interaction and language learning in the L2, uh, L2 class, understanding that the story is just the beginning, right? The story could trigger discussion, could trigger predictions, could trigger agreement or disagreement and um, develops uh, the language itself from the story. And finally, that stories are also form the basis of um, speaking, reading, listening, and writing tasks. Now, bearing this in mind as the benefits or the features or the contributions that stories brings to the classroom, I would like to connect this with the Chilean uh, context. Is the context that I've been working on um, or working in for a while now. Um, I think it's shared for by by many many Latin American contexts, but also other countries in the world. So in Chile, we tend to have uh, over forty students in the classroom. Children in primary tend to be between twenty something and forty five students in the classroom. Um, who see English and, as an alien language, so, who is present in other contexts, but not in their context outside the classroom, so outside school. So they have very little exposure to English apart from the English lesson. And in this rather large, I won't say large, classes, we have different learning needs uh, with students coming from different backgrounds. And as teachers, we face this context with a lot of administrative constraints, with um, schools that tend to demand um, uh, summative assessment or tests. And we tend to have, as teachers in state-run schools, very little time for planning. So we have all these expectations to work with young learners, but then we are faced with these other constraints. So I was in this school uh, working with my first grade um, that we usually have classes on Friday, the last period. And here's where um, I start telling the story from my primary classroom. Um, with this first grade who are around six years old, we struggle a lot at this point of the day because they were not there mainly. They were tired, uh, they were not engaged, they were not related to this language. So I decided to start using these five type of activities or appropriate activities for young learners. Games were really messy, songs were really demanding for them, so I started using stories and um, I started from what I knew, and I assumed that they were uh, close to. And these were story, um, well-known tales, or what we call fairy tales, right? Um, it was amazing for me to realize that they were able to connect. The first time I told the three little pigs, they knew the story. In the story, there were a lot of repetitions, so they were able to predict what was going to happen. They were able to join in. And we started doing this for a while. Um, they, they were feeling more confident, and I was able to see that they um, feel more engaged with the lesson. 
Um, but then I realized that some of these stories were not relatable for them. So that they needed something that they could connect with their own lives. Um, so I start paying a bit more attention to my students, students' background. These were uh, six years old. And I realized that um, the background of my students was diverse. Some of my students uh, came from different parts of Latin America. Some of them uh, were um, felt part of uh, a native, native peoples in Chile. Uh, and some of them actually spoke other languages. And I didn't know about that. Um, so at that point, I realized that I, that I needed to incorporate children's life in into the English lesson and this um, actually is really connected to what um, Vini was saying earlier on the importance and the purpose of these children um, to learn English. Um, so I realized as well that given that this context was so fabricated so there was nothing to relate these children with English, uh, being an, uh, an external motivation. Uh, my job was to actually help them to create this self-image as a speaker of other language. So either they spoke a language like Arabic or, um, or Mapuzungun, that they were, they, they were able to value that a language as uh, as much as learning English. So I, I, I would like to share with you this uh, quote from Lopez Gopar because it represents what happened to me at this point with, uh, with English and the English lesson. So English at that point uh, became a pretext to construct these affirming identities. So, um, children in these classes were not learning English. We were using English to, um, to, see, each other, to see each other as creative and intelligent individuals capable of producing different ways of knowing. So that was only the means. And from that point on, and I started to work and until now, that was over 10 years ago, um, I started to work on stories that make sense for children. So I would like to briefly share with you a story that um, I made based on my observations on children's interactions and or then their own um, experiences. And this is the story of the pencil and the scissors. So once upon a time there was a little pencil and this pencil was really happy because it was the first time she finished a picture on her own. Oh, look at this picture. I'm so, so happy. I would like to share this with someone. Hey, hey, scissors. She stole one of her friends, a pair of scissors. When she saw her, she called her over. <gasps> scissors, look at this. It's my so beautiful. Picture, picture no. Caesars was having a bad day. So when she saw the picture, she was very angry. And she cut it out in little, little pieces. Poor Pansy was really upset. And she started to cry. <laughs> My picture. She started to cry. 
crowd so loud when one of their, her friends came over. Hey, hey, Pencil, what, what's it, what's the matter? Pencil tried to explain. <laughs> oh, oh, there, there. Cheer up! And she started to yell out. Pencil, pencil, pencil. That fuss brought another friend. This was Sharpener, one of um, Caesar's friends. And Sharpener said, "Hey." What's the matter? Pencil tried to explain. <laughs> oh, I see, but I think Caesar's having a bad day. So go, Caesar's, Caesar's, Caesar's. So we had Sharpener saying, Caesar's, Caesar's, and Brian saying, Pencil, Pencil, Pencil. That brought more people around and that was the market. Hey, hey, what's the matter? Marcus said. Pencil tried to explain. <laughs> so now it was Marcus and Cryon trying to cheer Pencil up. Pencil, Pencil. So that brought the writer. Hey, what's the matter? Pencil tried to explain. <laughs> what do you think? Eraser joined forces with with the sharpener and both started cheering up. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. So we had a terrible mess. One group was saying pencil, 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 and the other group was saying. Caesars, Caesars, Caesars. That brought, who do you think? The ruler. Excuse me, excuse me. What's the matter? said the ruler. Pencil, trying to explain. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I see. Why don't we go for some help? We need some help. Let's go for glue. And they all together go for glue. Very loud. Could you help me? Glue! They tried again. One love, one heart, let's get together and be whole life. What's the matter? said Blue. Okay, I see. I can fix it. And just like that, put all the pieces together and there was great picture again. Pencil was really, really happy. Everyone was happy, jumping, dancing. But Caesars knew that there was something missing. Pencil, I'm sorry. I had a very bad day. Don't worry. That happens sometimes, said Pencil. And they hug very hard. And they all celebrate together. And that's the end of the story. So, this story was created based on the observation and attentive listening from the, uh, the children. We can incorporate storytellings in our lesson if we pay attention to what children say. 
they love sharing their their experiences what they did with their parents what they did with their granny what they did after school and sometimes we say ah oh, yeah, yeah yeah that's very interesting and we move on and that's what brings what it that's what uh, they're sharing and they're bringing or they want to bring to the classroom to their english lesson so by observing the interaction by paying attention to those elements we can incorporate those into stories we can incorporate those in the adaptation of stories so for example the story um, of the giant turnip in chile i don't think we have turnips so when whenever i tell the story i change the turnip into a, a carrot or a potato something that is more relatable for my students and sometimes i change the characters depending on or the situations or the dialogues depending on what i have been observing in that particular group so that they can see themselves in these stories so is 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 very important how we um, validate our own cultural elements in the stories we tell so by adapting these stories we make these stories children's stories now we can also create these stories with them those pictures over there are um, a project that we've been carrying out with the school and my uh, the group of pre-service teachers that I work with where um, one example on the children's stories is that we created a character so we needed to talk about one particular element in the or topic in the in the in the lesson and uh, we just started creating the story together so i show them this picture of a cartoon saying this is the once upon a time there was a little girl this girl was called and some of them said susana yes it was called susana and she lived in and someone said walpen that's an area near concepcion where i live uh, and she loved playing with her dog one said and this help us to create this story of Susana who lived in Walpen who uh, played with her dog and some of the these contributions were not in English some of them were in Spanish but there was not the point the point later we focus on the content and all that but the point of that exercise was that children were able to be part of the story to share their own stories and uh, put them put these experiences out there now i would like just to finish this um experience by saying that um after all this time and i'm sure this is not just us <laughs> Uh, as in Chile, um, we have realized that um, English is a language from lands very, very far away. Um, so we should focus on creating meaningful learning experiences uh, that allow our learners to construct this L2, L3, L4 um, identity so they can feel able to to speak and, and express in another language so as teacher we have the power to create children's stories as language learners so we need to work so that these stories are stories of caring are stories of enjoyment and stories of confidence on their own skills and that's the key on storytelling. Thank you very much. I hope we have some time for questions.
Okay, great. Five questions. Brilliant. So, any comments or any questions? No, oh, thank you very much. Please, uh, you can write your questions on the post. Comments are also welcome if you want to share your experiences or your context. I think we still got three minutes. Okay, how could you use, uh, Victoria asks, how could you use storytelling as part of a project in the classroom? Um, we could start, I have uh, used a story as one story and we do different things with the story. So one of the points could be, or oh, we have done is that we have tell the story. For example, the giant turnip, the giant carrot in this case. And then we have worked through the, the different elements of repetition. So we worked on the family. We worked on the countryside. Countryside is part of our elements um, in, in this city. So we have the countryside. Some of my students um, go to the countryside. The children go to the countryside. Um, so we explore the context of the story and we see the differences um, and the similarities of the story with the children's um, ideas or background. So in that story, it is a wife and a boy and a girl, and some of the, the children have been able to tell, oh, well, in my family, uh, it's just me and my granny. Uh, okay, so how would you retell the story with you and your granny? So you can make um, elements of this uh, as a project and expand it from one single story. Um, is discipline a problem with 40 children in the classroom? Yes. And here is where um, what Vinny was saying about how we work with discipline. Um, Stelma have, um, is presented a, a project in, in, one of, in, in, artic in an article on how uh, by making students part of the decision making, a children part of the decision making, we can actually organize our classroom in a way that everyone is responsible and everyone make decisions. Um, Harry uh, Kucha and has also uh, referred to this on how we can, how by validating students or children's decisions and agreements, uh, we organize the, the classroom in a, in a more, um, let's say, democratic way uh, where there are rules in order to work and we all need to decide what is going to happen um, if we don't follow the rules. Um, thank you so I think much, we are on time. Maria Jesus. That was fabulous. Thank you very much um, for your question. I questions. really love that story. It's actually my second time hearing Maria Jesus uh, tell that story and my first time was in Chile in January it was really fabulous and I'm so pleased that you were able to share it with the delegates during this web conference um, and uh, one important point for me was what you said about cultural adaptations and reaching children by making content culturally relevant and this really reminded me of the work of Joan Kang Shin with songs and she's worked a lot to make songs culturally relevant. So I think a lot of what you said about story, we can actually apply to other approaches and other resources as well. So thank you so much again. That's excellent. Thank you.